What's up guys? I wanted to show you what's going on with the 79 along with show you my new project, uh, tell you my plans for the future and much more. So stay tuned. <laughs> So first things up, I wanted to show you what's going on with the 79. So in my last episode, you saw me fit up the traction bars along with the hubs. Um, one issue I found real quick after I got those tacked up is uh, the turning radius. So the way this engine fits in this car, there's not a lot of room on the transmission side for the wheel to turn left. So it'll hit the transmission. Well, anyway, my traction bars are actually protruding farther than that. So... Well, I'm gonna to have to figure out a way to move those and make them articulate correctly. Um, the brakes, everything, I had to modify the, the brakes quite a bit to get them to fit. Um, Willwood doesn't make the nine and a half inch rotor, so I had to go with the Summit Racing, which uh, it fits awesome. I'm not really sure about the coating, but uh, we'll find out. So I've been getting a couple of questions about the engine mounts. These are temporary. They are not the permanent mounts. Obviously, I got three holes in this one here. That's because I was adjusting the engine to get it the best fit condition. So um, that's that's all that's going on there. Another thing you might notice is the firewall. It's just in there sitting with some Clico clamps. The reason why I haven't uh, nailed that down yet is because if I have to modify the firewall again to get the pedal assembly to fit good or the rear engine mount to fit good, I want to be able to take that out and modify it without having to cut it out again. Um, Another thing what we'll be doing here soon is the brakes. We did a three pedal Willwood brake system, so we'll have to modify this and it'll be connected to the cage. Another little project I'm working on is the electric power steering. This came out of a Toyota Prius. The only issue I'm seeing with this, or challenge I should say, is getting that electric motor to fit behind the dashboard. Uh, that's another thing that you might wanna stay tuned for. So there's a small update on the 79. I really do appreciate you guys following along with this. It makes it a lot easier for me to stay motivated. Um, it's kind of hard to make time to work on the car when I'm busy in my own life. So I'm trying to do the best that I can. And I hope you guys enjoy what I am putting out there. And I do realize I'm not really a filmmaker. I'm more of a fabricator. So I'm trying to make them as interesting and as fun as I can with the time that I've got. So um, now that I've showed you this, let's check out the new, the new project. I'd like to introduce the new project car. This is a Honda N600. It was built in 1971. Uh, I acquired this car from my friend Dayton. Originally had a 600cc motorcycle engine. Uh, we nicknamed him Toby. So I'm gonna just walk around the car and show you some of the features about it. We'll just start here at the front. So the grill there, that's a uh, JDM N360 grill. Somehow Dayton was able to track that down. If you notice, it's still got the yellow protection oil on it. Um, the front bumper, I have the front bumper, it's chrome. It's actually sitting underneath the car right now. Uh, you can see the little chrome sway bar, which is kind of cute. Uh, it's got the little bulge on the hood for the carburetor, which is kind of neat. As we move over to the side here, you can see these 10 inch wheels. These are actually ATV wheels that have been re-drilled to the correct pattern. Um, it has Advan HF tires. They're kind of cool. They have a dual tread pattern along with, uh, looks like there's some fender flares. As you can tell, the paint job isn't factory. This car used to be yellow. I'll show you in the engine bay so you can really see it. Um, it has pop-out windows on the front and rear. Let me show you this sexy interior. So it looks like they went ham with the blue diamond pattern. <laughs> Uh, I like these door handles. They're pretty cool. Let's go ahead and look at the interior right now. You can see the 600 logo there on the glove box. It has the shifter right on the dashboard, which is kind of weird. It actually tilts. See how it tilts back and forth? It's kind of cool. Um, obviously, the interior had been redone. It's uh, 
it's weird because I hate it, but I kind of like it at the same time, if that makes any sense. It does have a roll bar that looks like it's been made out of exhaust tubing, but it's actually pretty sturdy. But I'll definitely be building a new one of those that'll be maybe a little bit higher up to the top of the roof line. You can see the back seats are also done in the diamond stitch pattern. Uh, one of the stories I wanted to tell you guys about of this car, Dayton told me the original owner had fell off his roof putting up Christmas lights and broke his back on this, this roof. You can see it's really dented. It looks like someone tried to push the dents out from the inside. She's uh, pretty much stock besides that. It has a dead axle in the rear with leaf springs. You can see the, per the mounts right there on the back. Uh, it definitely needs uh, window seals, you can tell. Um, it's Another interesting fact about this car is the rear hatch is plastic. Kind of weird. It's super lightweight though. This car really doesn't weigh a whole lot. Looks like the mirror's missing. We're gonna have to do maybe a new steering wheel, maybe a custom steering wheel. Um, that's pretty much, oh, it also has these ball warmers down here. So as we come around, I'm gonna show you the engine and let you know what we're planning on doing to it. So, so now that the hood's popped, it's not hard to see what the original color was. This engine is really, really cool. So it's a inline two cylinder, 600 CC. The clutch you can see right there, it's got like just a normal little lever run by a cable. It's so simple, it's stupid. Single carburetor, little filter box there. You can see the jack and where the battery goes. Along with the spare tire actually goes right here. There's a, a mount for it that I don't have, but um, a couple things we're gonna have to do. The car is a brake system. It looks like Dayton figured out a brake cylinder that'll work. I'll try to get that to work. Um, the factory exhaust comes around here and it has a heat exchanger that goes in that hole that heats the cabin. So the cooling system for this engine is very interesting. Obviously it's air cooled and air will come through the front of the car through those fins, but it has a helper fan that's in a aluminum housing. It's a plastic fan, but it's, it's very, very heavy duty. It has a, a interesting belt system as well, where the belt comes around this pulley, it goes around and then it turns and goes down to a pulley down there. Very, very interesting. Um, as the heat comes through, it actually comes out these vents. So they actually do have a purpose, which is also really cool. So the original plan for this car was to get the factory engine running and driving and maybe just take it to some car shows, maybe fix a couple things on it, maybe modify it a little, put some headers. And then after uh, working on it a little bit, I was like, you know, I'm putting a lot of effort into this. I might as well just save that effort and put it into an engine swap. Looking at these on YouTube, they got them swapped with uh, bullet bike motors all over the place. So that and a friend of mine at work swapped the R1 motor into a Banshee and I couldn't believe how well it worked. So I figured, eh, how hard could it be? Although I know we're gonna have some challenges. The first thing that's really gonna suck is trying to get the power from a chain to a CV axle. Also, we can't just put a bike motor in it. We got a turbo it too, right? So that's what we're up to. I picked that engine up already. Uh, the next episode is going to be me going through the cylinder head. It had low compression. It had so much carbon buildup on the valves that they weren't seating correctly. So hopefully we got a good motor and we're going to build some cool shit for this. I mean, this car is going to be badass when it's done. So I'm hoping you guys are willing to follow along with me on this one too. And don't worry, I'm not going to forget about the 79. That's my baby. This one's kind of me and my wife's. She helped me pay for the car. She's helping me buy the parts. So there's that. And I also wanted to say thanks to you guys that are commenting and liking my videos and supporting me on my little journey here. I'm just trying to share my work with other people and maybe inspire them to finish their cars or do whatever they wanted to do. And I really do appreciate you guys watching my videos and uh, we'll catch you next time.